Hey guys, Saw Simon here, and thanks for stopping by my channel. Today we are going to be talking about Friday the 13th, the game, and 10 more new features I think the developers should add to the game to make the playing experience better. The ideas I will be suggesting are things I thought up while playing, some from the movies, some from the playing experience that people are upset with, and some that would just add new layers of fun to the game. As always, if you enjoy the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment letting me know what you think. Thanks again for watching, and here we go. This would be a welcome addition to the game. It's frustrating when you play a game that does require game chat to work at its best. Often in matches, nobody has or is using a mic in the groups. Adding the simple feature of quick commands by use of pressing up on the directional button and using the right analog stick to navigate around a menu of choices would have a nice backup for the mic system. That way, that player that is a broke ass and can't afford a mic can finally follow you somewhere or ask them to heal you so you can both escape together. A useful tool for those annoying players that get in your lobby and steal items from your cabin when three other cabins are close by, or hit you one time to drain your health because they think it's funny, or take the four-seater and drive off even though Jason is not around and they could easily let you and two other people into the car and all of you could escape together and get some experience. But no. This asshole wants you to know just how dilated their anus can get as they push a chunk of shit right into your face. By adding a vote to kick, it would give the party the option to firmly place a foot in those annoying players' asses and finally allow the players to do some plowing of their own. This is a new trap I would like to see added for Jason in the game. A simple leg noose that would be placed in the woods by a tree. If an unlucky camper were to step in it, it would lift you up off the ground and hang you upside down by your leg. Getting caught would make you drop any item you were holding such as the gas or propeller. However, items such as the machete and axe would not drop out of your hands, allowing you to cut through the rope faster. You would also be able to escape using a quick button system like repairing if you were without a cutting tool. Similar to being able to disarm the bear trap, you could also disarm this trap if found. However, you would also need a cutting tool to disarm the trap by cutting the rope out of the tree. This is something I personally need added to the game. A checklist of all the kills I have completed and which ones I still need to complete. I know there are a lot of environmental kills in the game, but to keep track of them all, especially the ones I have performed over the course of the last two or three months on and off would be very complicated. Especially with the added part where I have to, you know, play a counselor ten times in between before I get to play Jason again. Adding this list to keep track of it all would be a nice way to just, you know, see everything I have done along the way and all the things I need to do in order to get my platinum trophy in this game. If you don't know by now, you can enter a combat stance to fight by pressing in on the left analog stick. This puts you in a fighting stance where you can target better, block, and dodge. I personally really don't use the system as much as I should because I'm not really that familiar with it. I think they need to add, though, some different type of button lock on for attacking Jason for one simple reason. Sometimes when I go to attack Jason, even though I am aiming forward and pressing forward with my attack toward him, I will still somehow manage to swing my weapon behind myself or off to the side of my intended target. It is so frustrating to do that in the heat of battle when you are wide opening and you just miss and then you get grab raped by Jason because without a pocket knife you are pretty much done when all you wanted to do was bash in the side of his head a little bit and run away. Jason's bear traps are crazy. Not in that they are super damaging or anything like that, but because he can lay all of them down in one spot and there isn't anything you can do about it without a pocket knife or five pocket knives. If you have seen my 10 things videos, you know you can use the pocket knife to disarm a trap, but what are you gonna do about the other two or three? Nothing to do unless you are working with everyone and they come over and disarm them for you or bite the bullet and step in it. Hope to get out of it before Jason shows up. Then hope you are either fast enough to run before he comes or fast enough to repair the fuse and then get to the phone before Jason shows up to take you down. Bottom line, we need another way to disarm some of these traps. I understand it's Jason's only way to safeguard certain areas because he can't shift or morph all the time, for him, but allowing us to use the wrench or stick the baseball bat in the trap would be fair. Allow the trap to break whatever item you stick in it, but by adding this feature to the game, it means a better chance of being able to survive and combat Jason's overpoweredness. Now, if we can't have more items to disarm these traps, then perhaps the developers need to make it so Jason can't stack them all on top of one another anymore. Instead of having him stack the traps, make it so that when he lays them out, they must at least touch the edge of the other traps. This way, it will allow for a gap in the area for a player to get to what Jason was protecting when disarmed. But wait, is this totally not fair? Perhaps not, because then the other two or three traps to the side are useless, right? 
Not necessarily. Instead of having them end up as useless, make it that if the counselor makes a mistake while trying to repair the fuse box, let's say, the shock they get will cause them to step into the trap as a side effect. Some may see this as unfair or bullshit, but there still needs to be a balance for the game. You can't take certain checks away without placing some new balances in return. But that's just my two cents since this is my list. Just like it sounds, Jason should be allowed to pick up his unused bear traps and place them somewhere else when needed. No reason to let them go unused, especially if you pick a Jason that has limited bear traps to start with as it is, and you accidentally put one somewhere that you did not intend to. Of course, though, you should not be allowed to pick up used bear traps, because because that's just stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, I phoned this one in. I'm, I'm sorry. If you are watching this and have played the game, you know there is a very toxic community in the game. Glitchers, squeakers, cheaters, quitters, and everything in between. So much so that developers have started banning players just for these types of behaviors. Instead of straight up banning them for playing it at all, give these types of players time bans depending on their infractions and work your way up to permanent bans. No one wants to lose their ability to play for any reason, but giving some of these people bans for certain periods of time might be what they need so they don't continue to act like assholes forever. This helps for a few reasons. One, it shows those asshole players that if they keep up their attitude, they will be done in the game. Two, it rewards the players who aren't assholes by showing them that the developers care that we are getting shit on by these toxic players. Three, it ensures that no one is banned for the first time forever, losing out on their 40 bucks because they may not know the rules fully yet, or just bought the game and someone told them to do something that they should not have done. Because, to be honest, there are some asshole people out there that apparently start shit with other players trying to get them worked up really bad, and once they are worked up, then record that person losing their temper and turn them in saying how that person was toxic and causing problems when really it was the other asshole who worked the guy up and then when he exploded, recorded him and turned him in for it. It's a real dick move on that person's part, so don't be that guy in the community. Keep the playing environment nice, fair, and fun. This is another simple thing to add for all us players. It's hard to know who will be Tommy and when the hell it will allow you to be Tommy. I have died and came right back as Tommy and other times I have died and Tommy was called and I would never get to come back. And then randomly some other new dead person or the third or fourth dead person would become Tommy. Hell, I was in a match where I called Tommy and he never showed until the last person escaped in the car and then I respawned in the game as Tommy with nobody else on the map but me and Jason. It would be nice to have a confirmation button asking after you died, would you like to play as Tommy Jarvis and give the responder 10 seconds and then go to the next player. This allows people who died early in the match and are AFK to not waste Tommy if they get him and it allows other players to skip playing the character if they don't want to help others or just want to give others a chance to play him while letting you know if you accept playing him, you will enter the game at that point. Well guys, that's all I have for you on this one. I hope you liked these ideas and at least found the video entertaining enough to stick around till now. Maybe Gun will see this and take a cue, but I doubt it. Let me know what you think down below and I will see y'all next time.